right? It says here now that in an experiment to determine the specific latent heat of fusion of ice, shown in figure 6, the following results were obtained. The initial mass of water is 120 grams. The initial temperature of the water is 35 degrees Celsius. And the initial temperature of the ice is 0 degrees Celsius. Now, let's say now the final mass of the water is 140 grams. And the final temperature of the water plus the melted ice is 18 degrees Celsius. So, what we have is that we have some water, right, at, well, 120 grams of water at 35 degrees Celsius. And some ice was poured into it. Then, after some time the ice has now melted and now the mass of the water now comes up to 140 grams and the temperature of the water actually went down from 35 degrees celsius to 18 degrees celsius right so the temperature of the water went down but also the temperature of the ice went from 0 to 18 right so we're going to use this information here to answer some questions so the first thing that they say you now let's go and see what they say so the first thing they say you now to determine the mass of the melted ice, right? So again, right, we have some water, 120 grams of water. Some ice was placed in it, the ice melted, and now the new mass is 140 grams. So we're going to say you now that M, right, which is the mass of the ice. Right, so we're going to say the mass of ice is equal to the mass of water plus ice. plus ice minus mass of water right so the mass of the water plus ice was given as let's go back and see mass of the water plus ice was given as 140 grams right and the mass of the water alone was 120 grams so we're going to say 140 grams minus 120 grams and it is equal to 20 grams so therefore 20 grams of ice was melted in this experiment so now let's say we were to calculate the heat loss by the water so we're going to consider eh is equal to m c delta t right because we have a change in temperature of water so we're going to consider m c delta t now in our case m was given as 120 grams c is always 4.2 right uh, in this case it actually gave us 4.2 joule per gram per kelvin right so we say 4.2 joule per gram per kelvin right and our change in temperature now uh, we can actually calculate that by considering the initial temperature which is 35 and the final temperature which is 18 so we're going to say 35 minus 18 so 35 minus 18 which is equal to 17 degree celsius so now we'll plug this into our formula so we're going to say 120 grams multiplied by 4.2 joule per gram per kelvin multiplied by 17 kelvin then now we get our calculator, right? And we say 120 times 4.2 times 17. And that works out to be 8,568. So we get 8,568. And in this case, it's going to be Joule since we're dealing with energy. Right? Then now we will continue. Now, in our next question, it says now to write an equation for the total heat gained by the ice melting and the melted ice warming to 18 degrees Celsius. So, what we have is, let's go back. So, again, what we have is we have some water right, that we place some ice in, right? And the water actually lost some heat to the ice that caused it to melt first and then after the ice was completely melted it actually the heat from the water initially then caused the temperature of the ice to increase from zero degrees to 18 degrees celsius here so what we're saying is that we have some 
heat that was lost by the water that caused the ice to melt first and then raise its temperature right so we can make a statement here right that heat loss loss by the water is equal to heat gain by the ice now what we're saying is that we have some heat loss by the water which is can be given as m of the water times the specific heat capacity of the water times the change in temperature of the water right and that now will be equal now to the heat gained by the ice which caused it to first melt so we're going to consider first a latent heat of fusion so that's going to be m l f of the ice right plus m c delta t right since the ice melted and its temperature rose so now this would be our expression right for the total heat gained by the melting ice and the melted ice warming to 18 degrees celsius then now in our next question now they say we're to calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of ice right so we're going to write back our formula that m double c double times delta t double must be equal to m l f of the ice plus m c delta t now in our case mass of the water was uh, determined earlier and that was 120 grams specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 joule per gram per kelvin and the change in temperature right we calculated that before right and that was 17 degree celsius so we get 17 kelvin here right uh, because a change in temperature in celsius is the same change in temperature in kelvin and that now be equal now to the mass of the ice which was determined here again as 20 grams so we say 20 grams times the latent heat of fusion of ice plus mass of the ice again is 20 grams specific heat capacity of the water which came from the melted ice is 4.2 so we're going to say times 4.2 joule per gram per kelvin multiplied by the change in temperature which is 18 kelvin in this case because the ice went from zero degrees because it said that it was initially initially at zero degrees and then it went up to 18 degree so we can now start to simplify this right so we calculated this before already and we actually got 8568 joules let me just double check that All right so 8568 joules and that is equal to two grams times the latent heat of fusion put that in a bracket plus 20 so let's get our calculator All right so we're going to say 20 times 4.2 times 18 and that is equal to 1512 and this would be joules then now since we're trying to find latent heat of fusion we can first subtract 1512 joules from both sides so we're going to get 8568 joules minus 1512 joules equal to 2 grams times the latent heat of fusion when we simplify this right we get 8568 minus 1512 which is 7056 so we say 7056 joules is equal to 2 grams times the latent heat of fusion right and we're trying to find latent heat of fusion so we just simply divide both sides by 2 grams right and divide here by 2 grams and then we see that our latent heat of fusion will be given in joules per gram so we simply divide this 7056 divided by 2 right and we get 3528 so 3528 joule per gram right in other words our latent heat of fusion lf is equal to 
three five two point eight times ten to the third joule per kilogram right and that would be our answer